my mentality when I when I do start to be like, damn, this is a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, that's what it's supposed to feel like. If if you are going toward what the vision look like, and that's like greatness. That's you know, on multiple levels, the vision that I'm working toward. So I'm like, I just think about that. Like this shit ain't supposed to feel. You know, comfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. It's supposed to stretch you. It's supposed to be a burden to a degree. And you gotta, you know, wrap your mind around that and accept it and embrace it. And you catch some wisdom off of that. You gotta go hard. You gotta believe in yourself. And you gotta have a sense of humor and know that bullshit is gonna happen. You can't be too serious about it, too emotionally affected when bullshit happens. You have to just stick to the script, believe, have overwhelming confidence, be your own biggest fan, your own biggest believer and put it on your back, carry the weight. All my original goals, I met them. I had, I, had, I had goals as somebody coming out the street. So I didn't have a hell of a entertainment set of goals. I never wanted to win a Grammy. That was not my goal coming out the street. Them is music goals now mm-hmm. that I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm in the music game. That was never my goal. I never thought about selling a million records. I thought about, you know, doing something legit to, to make my money and being able to, you know, not worry about when I heard the helicopter late at night thinking they was coming to kick the door down. Right. You know, I was like, I read an article that Joel Santana made 15,000 a show. I don't know if it was true or not, but I'm like, damn, you can make 15,000 a show? That's how I was thinking at that time. Like, you know, what we did as teenagers to make 15,000, you get a lot of years for it. Absolutely. So, you know, you could go do a tour where you make that every night. And then I remember, looking at every state, like it's 50 states. If I could sell a thousand units in each state, Indy, at $8 a unit, you know what I mean? I could make somewhere near half a million if I just figure out how to do that. And that was my little entry level goal. So, you know, we we, we established and accomplished them things early and I had to re, re, redevelop my goals. Now that I was in the game and I learned niggas get a million a show, niggas get half a million a show. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, you know, you got, but I knew, but I didn't. I didn't think that it was realistic that you could really sell millions and millions of records and become a global brand. So, as I became exposed to these situations, met these people that performed on that level, and like you know, you ain't no smarter than me. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just in a position. You just, you know, you 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 sitting in in, in a space where you could execute on that level. You know what I mean? I start reestablishing what my goals were. Thoughts is powerful. You know, things end up turning out exactly how I visualized them. Not right. not in this time frame I expected. You know what I'm saying? You always want shit to happen overnight. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just had clear visions. You know, obviously outside of my grill. I just mean the music right, and, right, and right. hustling and just how I viewed myself as an adult when I was a young dude coming up. And uh, your thoughts powerful. That shit, you know, come to life. Rap is competitive like an athlete. You know what I mean? You don't want to be number two by design. You ain't gonna cry if you don't win the championship. You gonna go harder in the gym. But um, I, what I know about life is that you gonna you gonna hurt yourself. You know, life, is, especially as a creative, creativity and competition is opposites. You know what I'm saying? And they are they work against each other creatively. When you in the, when you, you you have to draw from a blank canvas, you gotta draw from your pool of experiences for it to have that thing in it. And you could compete and make something that's like technically good, but it's like a cloned human being. They might have two legs, but it's not the same as a baby that was born from a mama and daddy and it was some love made, and that's a different formula. So I think that to create is like a natural labor. And then to copy or to like compare or compete creatively, you confuse yourself. You know what I'm saying? Cause you miss all the dope shit that you that only you can do. It's shit I can only Nip can say certain lines. It's 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 a it's a it's a song that only I can write because it's only true to me. Now it's true to everybody in the world if it's true because we all got the same general truths. But the specifics of it, them is the songs I need to write, and those is where I'ma really succeed. And I think I heard Ross say some real shit. He's like, man. I want every penny that's mine. I don't want a penny more or a penny less. And that's a good way to look at it. You know, I don't want any shine, success that ain't mine. You know, that's the reality of, uh, you know, success or greatness that it come with a roller coaster ride, you know? So I think that anybody could apply the marathon concept to what they do, if it's sports, if it's fashion, if it's music, 
Um, if it's hustling, whatever, you just on a you on a marathon, you know. So to make that the basis of our, you know, fashion line, I look at it like you know we honor the people that ain't quit. We honor the people that stay down. There's no one answer to, to how you change the hood or change the, the, the reality of what goes on. But what you gotta think about is when you don't have resources, you in survival mode. You know, so being in survival mode automatically rules out a lot of things. Cause you don't care about morality because you don't experience morality. You experience, you know, the need to survive. You don't experience, you know, fairness. You don't experience planning for the future. You just experience my ribs touching. You know what I mean? And it's better me than you. And you know, it's a survival instinct that kick in. So I think once you get out of the survival mode, your, your morals come back closer to, to your daily decision making. You start thinking about what's right and what do I believe in? But until you get out of survival mode, you ain't got time to be worrying about right and wrong. You worrying about bottom line. You know what I mean? By any means necessary. So I think that Economics is the answer. Empowering people economically is how you really, really impact. But I don't know if it's about dropping a bag of money in the hood. I think it's about impacting culture in a way that, you know, the mentality changes. And then also, you know, the, the institutions that exist. It's just a prison institution, really. It's like a pipeline of jail. It, it, ain't, it ain't no no, no constructive institutions for real that meets you ground level. It's just like if you fuck up, we gonna we got somewhere to put you. So it's like a fear-based, preventative approach. Then like some love and like we know y'all going through a struggle, and we know y'all could use an art center or a, you know what I mean a studio, compound or entrepreneurial space. It's like whatever going on. If you can't figure it out, we are gonna lock you up, bro. So whatever it is, yes, yeah, on y'all. I think like you get people out of survival mode, they start thinking different. I did, you know, when I when I figured out, you know, how to how to get myself out of the situation, my approach to life and people was different. I wasn't so angry, I didn't have my guard up. I wasn't so aggressive, I wasn't so, you know, expecting if you ain't helping me, fuck you. It wasn't that wasn't the mentality no more. And I can't blame nobody, you know what I mean, that's thinking about how they gonna pay their rent or like going through not having food at the house, being young and having to go outside to hustle for, for to feed themselves with school clothes. That's gonna change people, that's gonna make you feel away. And you can't fault them, you just gotta kinda empathize with the, with the scenario and understand you put a, a person in, in survival mode, they gonna survive by any means. Um, I, I couldn't make a blanket statement to just the young people doing dirt. I don't think that's honest. You know what I mean? It's context for everything. Nothing happens in a vacuum, you know? But I would say that, you know what I mean? You're gonna lay in the bed you make. You're not gonna get away with nothing in terms of the energy. You know what I mean? You might beat the, the camera or the police. They might not catch you for what you're doing, but the energy is always gonna return to you. So when you when you just living in this in this cycle of being negative all day and just putting out negativity and, and that's the only energy you putting out, it's gonna return to you in a different form than you put it out in. So I would just say, you know, master your energy, do your best to master your energy and, your, and what you put out, you know, and um, unless that's what you want, you know, cause you, you entitled to whatever you wanna create, whatever experience you wanna create for yourself. But if you are tired of that shit, adjust the energy, you know what I mean? As best you can, adjust, adjust what you wake up thinking and what you say. And then, lastly, what you do, and that's not an easy thing to do because it's, it's such a pressure in the, in, the, in these areas to just go by the, the way things are. But, you know, it's a lot of examples that you could look up to as young kids in the streets. You could look up to a, you know, a Kendrick Lamar. Not the words, forget what he's saying, just where he came from. I seen him, you, you could YouTube him freestyling in the Nicholson Garden Projects. You could look up to a Nip Hustle. You know, you could look up to a YG, you know what I mean? To a, a top dog, you know what I mean? To, to a, any one of these guys that came from this, this, this hopelessness and, and, you know, wiggled their way through it. You know what I mean? And you can reverse engineer what they did. You know, look at the steps, what, what, what happened?